partners. Yep. Here, yellow, and his, his name will be purple. Which is his full color. Yes. Good job. Hey.
Three. Joe, do you want one too? One what? It's, it's oh, like no, a keto, zero no. sugar, zero carbs. No, I'm all set. Thank you for asking. Though. Crystal Beaver, absent with notes. Rebecca Shambles, here. Mark Holka, absent with notes. Didn't you say Mark Holka? Mark. I heard you say Mark. I apologize. No. Cindy Holder, here. Barbara Castle, absent with notes. Deborah Ott, here. Gloria Thompson, here. We have more. Uh, 
Public input is fundamental to the operation of Madison District Public Schools. Our public has an opportunity to speak at every board of education meeting, a period of time known as public comment is set aside at each meeting to give parents and other citizens a chance to speak directly to the board about school-related topics. Anyone wishing to speak to the board must fill out a request form, give it to the board secretary before the meeting begins, Comments are limited to three minutes. School employees will not use this forum to discuss job-related topics. The Board of Education accepts comments made during public comment from anyone who follows these guidelines. Public comment is one of the many information sources that the Board uses before making decisions in the best interest of the children who attend Madison District Public Schools. The board also works with the district staff to address citizens' questions and concerns. Did we get any requests? Hearing none, we will move on. Uh, the discussion tonight is the superintendent goals. And uh, I did send via email um, and I know Mr. Abdullah has them as well. Um, what the board had agreed upon last year, um, they were accepted May 3rd, 2021. So um, it is more than time that we need to get back to updating our goals, um, looking at what can come off of this list, what maybe as a group we think needs to be added, um, so that this can be current and um, useful for not only the school board, but for Mr. Abdullahad, um, because this is a part of his evaluation. So it needs to be clear for him as well what it is that the expectations are from the school board. Um, so I guess last year we had to do a good lot. We're going to try to do it tonight without him and see if we can make any progress and if not then I guess you know maybe we will have to resort to that but I'm hoping that um, all of us can do our due diligence be respectful and still move ahead so with that and with the public not um, having anything in front of them uh, goal area the first one was communication Improve communication both internally and externally. Continue newsletters to various groups. Utilize town hall and public forum. Utilize social media. Develop marketing and communication to improve student enrollment. Um, does anybody here think that that needs to come off the list? Trustee Chandler, go ahead. Um. Are we able to add to that? Yeah. First of all, I think we need to go through and see if anything um, we feel has been achieved that we can take off the list. Okay. And right. then we'll open it for discussion, okay? Yes, ma'am. Perfect. Okay, so anybody here have any of those that we think we can take off the list? Um, Madam President, the I think the that. social media can be removed. The uh, school's Facebook page has been awesome lately. Does anybody have any input on that? Do we agree? Disagree? Okay. Trustee Chambliss, go ahead. I'm just wondering, if we take it off, are we saying that we're okay with where it's at? Or would we leave it on and then say we want it to continue moving forward? And we could, like, it's been doing great for the past, what, five, six weeks? Would we want to leave it on and see if it continues to improve? Or like, it's my first time doing like a goal review, so I'm just, I'm not sure. Trustee, yeah, what your intent was, you think we attain that goal or keep it on so that we can continue to well, utilize it or? We can keep it on, but I don't think it should be one of the superintendent's top priorities. I think it's been mastered. But if it's the will of the board to keep it on, just as a reminder, then so be it. And, and that's what we're here for, just to have something, right. some talk and discussion. So I'm okay with either way. I just 
I would like to see it continuing. It has been doing great. I think we're at like 600 hits. So a maybe week, we could but add um, continue to utilize social media. Would that be a better? Yeah. Would that be the middle of the road that everybody could agree to? Yes. I just don't want to see it drop off. I want it to continue. Okay. Mr. Abdullah, do you have any objections to that? I'm just jotting down some notes right now. Just okay. gathering information, so, jotting down some We notes. aren't voting on anything tonight. Yeah, I'm just, just taking some notes. Okay. But we all can, at least those of us that are here tonight, can agree that maybe that one change. Madam President. Uh, Trustee Holcomb, go ahead. Okay, it says continue newsletter, so we're going to keep it on her to continue. Right? Okay. And uh, social media is the same thing. We're going to leave it on to continue. It's not that it's a goal, it's just we're going to continue going. Got it. Okay. Okay. Anybody have any input in the town hall slash public forum? I don't know that we have. Uh, Mr. Julia, do you think that we have used that? I think that was when we were trying to inform the public about the infrastructure and the bonds, and we wanted um, to inform the town hall because if you look at um, town hall public forum along with facilities where in, investigate financial options to, for projects and sinking fund or bond. I think those two went together when we were exploring which direction to go before the bond got approved. Any other input? Okay, Mr. enrollment doing like open houses, town halls to bring people in the community. Um, real estate can do great in the area, so maybe some families have moved in, so those could be beneficial. And so add the word continue or leave it the way it is. Leave it, I leave, it leave it the way it is yeah. seems to be. Okay. okay, last one, develop marketing, communication to improve student enrollment. Sometimes 
you know how we have an, um, an advertisement. Instead of going page by page, now we just kind of scroll down. Well, my uh, intentions are to develop a website almost like that, where you have a running feed of all the social, social media, Instagram, um, Instagram, Facebook, um, all the different schools ones. I did the re restarted Twitter so I could put that in there. Um, just so things could have um, a, a, a running theme for them. Um, and then a video clip, almost like a commercial that I would put out 30 seconds of it on Facebook. And then the full video would be on our website. Um, I, I am partnering with a marketing firm now on that. Uh, this would go along with the targeted uh, flyers. So we do targeted flyers to Pontiac. Um, I've not done targeted flyers to um, Detroit area, but I'm not opposed to it if, if we could get a bus load there. I know other districts do that as well. Um, we had kindergarten roundup. Uh, we, we, we started advertising, so that's looking good. I, I agree that, you know, enrollment and positive, positive trends tend to feed off each other. So we're almost at a thousand followers now on Facebook um, and, and want to just keep it going and people are sharing our links and they're sharing our videos. And um, I agree that we should continue. I mean, e whether it's written or not, I know what's working, I'm gonna keep doing what's working. If we're getting positive results, so I'm gonna do it. So um, I'm not opposed to any other ideas, but those are the two things that I'm working on right now one minute video clip and then the new district website trying to roll that out. Madam President, I think I brought up a couple it's been a while. Where over in St. Clair Shores they have we have a sign for the bus drivers on the fence. These were big vinyl signs on the fences at every school for enrollment. I think that's a good idea. I mean, if that's what you guys want, we throughout our district, you know. Uh, anybody else? Trustee Jim, let's go ahead. Um, have we? We just bought a house last year. When we bought it, we went through bid after bid because before we could get our bid in, at the end of the day that we looked at the house, the house was already got an offer taken. So I know that a lot of real estate in this area is changing hands over the past year. Are we thinking about doing like open houses, trying to bring families in, have like fun events at the different buildings? I know other districts do that. And to do more local targeting, as well as Pontiac and um, Detroit. And then I know that um, it was recommended that potentially we look at getting like a booth at Trail Tunes or Juneteenth to kind of also be supportive of those events while promoting the district. And that could be like local targeting. Goals um, to have a high-performing school, the goals have to be measurable. 
So if we're doing something with um, internal communication, there should be time limits. So it should say, respond to every email within 24 hours. If it's a subject that you need more time on, at least respond saying, I received it, you know, I'll get back to you in the next 48 hours, or that's going to take me a week. But that, by putting a timeline on there, it makes it more of a measurable thing, so that's not perception or opinion when it comes time for evaluation, it's fact of date and time stamp. So, uh, anybody else have input? Can we look at adding that uh, response within 24 hours for every question? Can I, uh, Mayor President? Absolutely, <laughs> trust Can I go ahead. add to the, the elephant in the room, as you say? Um, I know Rebecca talks about uh, putting a timeline uh, to answer, but shouldn't we also have a, uh, a basis to our emails that if, it's, if, if they're not, um, not if they're not answerable, but if it, if it doesn't pertain to what's going on? I guess I, my point was just for clarification, and maybe I didn't state it as clearly as I should. I think all of our questions are legitimate. Some are smaller and some are bigger. Okay. Um, and I just would like um, to for all of us to feel that we're each getting a response. Um, and uh, trustee. Um, Chambliss is right. Part of what we need to do is we're looking for these goals, and what was stressed is that we need to have it linked to time frames for everybody's help. That way, we know what the expectation is, and um, Mr. Abdullahad knows what the expectation is. And it may be, you know, I can't do it right now, but I will get back to you, so we know it's been done. Um, does anybody disagree? Have something they want to add or delete, Mr. Abdullahad? I, I would just say, um, maybe if you put a caveat in there with um, normal business hours, if it's the weekend, or if you know, if I have absolutely no problem. Yeah, with if that um, if I'm on vacation or anything like that, or, you know, um, but I have no problem responding, even if it requires more time. Um, so and I just, want to make just, sure we get this concise for you and for us. Okay. Business, so it's going to be business hours? For every question within normal business hours, 24 hours, during normal business hours. That's reasonable. I like that. Except for the weekends and, you know. Okay, well, normal business yeah, hours. Yeah, yeah, perfect. For perfect. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, all right, response for every question by board member. Um, within 24 hours, during normal business hours. Does anybody have anything to add? Or do we think that that's concise enough? I think that's a good one that we can look at um, adding, and obviously we will send this uh, along with uh, to the other two board members that aren't here now. So you, you did say it's okay to say um, received, but it'll take more time to, mm -hmm. if, to if gather the indeed, information. Yeah, yeah. If indeed that's the case, yeah. obviously. Yeah, some stuff could be simple, but if it's, Mr. Blood, can you, you know, give us a running tab of where we are? It might take, you know, something. Okay. Right, yeah. Yeah. right, but it's good, I guess, yeah. We're still not going to be responsible to make sure it comes. Sure. Okay. Uh, anything else that we want to add for communication? Hearing none, move on. Uh, facilities. Improve facilities across the district. Develop facilities committee process, including citizens. Utilize committee process to develop project list. Investigate financing options for projects such as sinking fund or bond. Develop timeline for improvements and other funding options if needed. Um, what say you guys on this section? Madam President. Trustee that. 
I believe we can delete three and four since we successfully passed a bond. Uh, maybe not the seeking fund, but the wording of the bond, as well as the timeline, that's all covered. I'm sorry, Ms. Ott, can you tell me what three and four are? Oh, I'm going to read them. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Three is investigate financing options for projects such as sinking fund or bond. And the fourth is develop timeline for improvements and other funding options if needed. So because the bond's been passed, I think that removing three makes sense. And we could also keep in there. I'm saying we could keep in there a sinking fund in the back of the back of the book if it ever came down to that. Yeah, right. I think yeah. I think the bond is gonna have everything that we need. Um trustee Chandler's go ahead. Sorry. Um no, I'm sorry, I was just shaking my head that I agreed with her. Um I think this one we've actually done really well on. Um, I would like to see a timeline for improvements so we know a little bit more of like when to expect like projects to be like done. Just it's kind of like a hurrah, like you got this approved, we're doing great, we're working on this. It's like show what we're doing, show the positives, really brag about even the smallest of things, you know, the high school got new doors or whatever, I'm just making that up, but like you know, just give examples and really show off what we're doing because if people look us up online, there's a lot of negative there. So maybe if the positive is sprinkled in with like, hey, you know, in April of 22, you know, we got all new windows in the lab or whatever it's gonna be, which point is like brag about the good stuff too. Okay, so do we agree three and four for now can be moved or removed? Mr. Duhon, Number two, the, the project list. Yes. Uh, if you recall, we only did those things that were highlighted by um, SETSEC. That's what we ran on the bond. That's what. So the project list in, involving a committee, I mean, that was before the bond. We, we told the community, the taxpayers, we're only addressing set set and that's all we're doing and so i think too we can't deviate and create our own project list now so I, I would suggest that you remove that to allow more confidence on the taxpayer saying hey you guys ran on this we gave you this nothing else okay any objections no So typically when because you ran on an infrastructure bond, so when you do committee, if you're trying to do facelift and edifying, you went purely on infrastructure. We did not do bells and whistles. We said, hey, we got all these mechanical issues, the, these roof issues, set set highlighted it, independent agency highlighted it, and that's what we did. So we didn't have, we did do a walkthrough. If you remember that, that was not successful, but we did open our doors to people and we showed them our needs and the taxpayers approved that, so we so, didn't have a committee. So are we maybe in agreement that all four of these can be replaced with maybe something a little more updated? Because we still will have facility needs. Yep. The bond will be taken care of and be governed by an independent person that we've hired. So, what about putting in there? Um, um, first of all, Paul Wills. Okay, yeah, I'm sorry. Before, that, that, does anybody have an objection to removing the board and, and restructuring? No, thank you. I'm so, sorry. Well, so we Inter we secure the contract with um, Plant Moran Cressa. Um, he's going to give us a monthly. And so what we could actually put in there is once Paul Wills gives the board an update, then I could share that out in a mass email. Take his narrative, 
send it to the to the um, everyone on our email server and say here's an update to keep everyone in the loop. And then I what I could do is I could take that same email, put it on social media for those that are community members but are not getting direct email from us. So that could be a replacement for all of those. As, as Paul Wells does the update, then I could communicate that update via social media and or email. Um, His name is Paul Wills. Paul Wills from Plant Marine Cresta. He's going to be our owner rep. So does anybody have an objection to even adding that? No. Okay. All righty. Um, along with that, now we still will have outside facility things um, you had addressed. Blockers and yeah. uh, signs. Yeah. So, how do we want to talk about the facilities that still need to be addressed and are covered under the lines? Well, you you have a motion that's standing that you have an update monthly on ESSER, and then you have a facility update. I mean that that is a standing motion until you kill that motion, right? So, we could, for example, um, a PA system that will once. We get quotes. We present that. That would be a facility facility presentation, um, and that is a standing thing monthly. And we are still going to have a set set update until everything's been done. Yeah, because if if you do a roof, if you get um, a new quote, then prices get readjusted and. It doesn't hurt us. If there's no, nothing to update, then there's nothing to update. But if there's an update, then you want to be informed. So, so we can add ESSER and what was the other one? Well, it's already a standing. Um, Understand. Yeah. So you have an ESSER update uh, through Edwina Hill, and then you have a facility update slash setsec update through uh, facility, which is Lawrence Miller. Yeah. So we can add those. Well, they're, you, you not add them. they're not yours, but that's not your goal. We need to be specific about what our expectation is with you. So I don't want to complicate or cross those lines. But I still think, and, and um, Ms. Herbin, um, would it be unreasonable to put the Plant Moran update, even though well, your goals are your long-term, big-picture expectations of the superintendent. So the question really is, how does that relate to your long-term, big-picture goals of the superintendent in terms of what you're going to evaluate them against? And your goals are your own, but um, you know, I just urge you to think big-picture, long-term, what are you going to evaluate the superintendent against when his evaluation comes up? So, now in plain English. Your goals are getting very granular. Got it. Okay. Ms. Holder? Y yes, go ahead, Trustee Chambliss. Would it be appropriate to maybe put, and Mr. Dillahan, are we still doing the building walkthroughs like every month that Jamie had mentioned would be happening after the, the tour with the tour? And um, maybe since we're taking so much of this away, but we don't want to just not have goals for the facilities because that's how things have been you know, happening, um, maybe we could put that he will ensure the building walkthroughs are performed, he will make sure the Board of Education is supplied that. Since he's our employee and they're his, he's just doing a soup, maybe that goal is more of supervisory, just ensuring that the board gets those things so that they don't get dropped off by anyone else. <coughs> I'm sure that we are up to I think especially with uh, Plant Maria and the set second to board to get that out to the floor. Um, okay, any objection, Mr. Dillahan? Uh, you just said you want to ensure. So here's what I wrote down from my notes. Have monthly update email to parents and community members um, based on the feedback from Paul Wills. Uh, and then ensure that you're updated, but I don't know, is that monthly, weekly? Because I've heard different discussions. Monthly. monthly. Why don't we do it monthly? 
and if there's nothing to update them. On facilities and facilities and facilities. facilities, okay. Yeah, which is the SR, the set setting, and just overall facility status, any projects or anything. Okay. Wait. That's different than what I heard. So, this is why I got confused. Yeah, so, okay. facilities, and then you threw an S or you kind of threw me before a loop. Ensure you are updated monthly on facilities. Right. I was saying because Ms. Holder had said, how would we put them? Because Dr. Hill does the S or and Lawrence does the facility set side update. So, I said because they're your employees and your hours. Like you needed to do it as more of a supervisory thing, so you're just going to ensure that they get those. So if they don't update us, you'd be at coming to them and saying what's going on. Like it's just ensuring that your employee does. Okay. Sure. Sure. That you're updated monthly on facilities and S or updates. Which, which we already are actually basically every month. So is this just repetitious? and his goals. Well, that's that's what we're talking about. Okay, I was just saying. <laughs> <laughs> well, we get, we get, right we get updated every month on ESSER and our facility by, yeah. Uh, my concern really, just to share, was the, the new stuff, the Plain Moran, yeah. the um, uh, improvement updates, because I agree with Trustee Chambliss. Um, we need to be shouting our good news to a lot more, um, but, and keeping the public up to date. I think um, Mr. Dulahan is right, the yes or in the set set is already being covered on our agenda, so I think that maybe we can remove those two. We've already addressed those, how's that? So, so take off the last thing, ensure Because they're already here. They won't be your okay. job, they will still be their job. So I, I tweaked a little bit based on what I'm hearing. Have monthly updates emailed to parents and community members based on Plan Moran's uh, monthly presentation and any improvement updates to basically, like you said, shout them out, hey, we're getting new lockers, or hey, so people could get excited on some developments, is what I heard you guys say. Right, okay. I can project here and say, Hey, we're getting new lockers. When we get them, say, hey, you have to come see our new lockers. And once we have them, right? Once we have them. And and today is is our kind of walkthrough. As we think about these, we may decide that they need to be tweaked just a tad. Right. But I think this is a good walkthrough. And then if um, Mr. Urban decides that we need to to tweak this anymore, he can let us know. Um, Okay, anything else as far as facilities goes? No? All right, we can move on to curriculum. It says improve and update curriculum, develop curriculum committee process with timelines for updates in certain areas, develop summer school review special ed 504 advanced placement plans as needed. Continue implementation of K through five ELA. Continue development of K five math curriculum. Explore new curriculum, including electives for MHS. So, what's our initial input for curriculum? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Curriculum committee. Mr. Abdulahad? Yeah, that's that's when the buildings set up a curriculum development team. And they get um, a whole bunch of different textbooks sent to them, they review, and then they go with a pilot. That's what they did with the K, K uh, 5. And once you pick one out before you made the $100,000 investment, what we did is we piloted it for a year. We liked it. The curriculum team then made a recommendation. Then I presented the recommendation to the board. The board approved it. Now they're implementing it. Um, anybody else have any input? 
Can can you, um, Mr. Abdullah, maybe we'll start with you. Are there any of these that um, it says continue implementation of? Um, I know that we will always be striving to um, move our curriculum ahead uh, in mass, but uh, as far as K-5 ELA, K-5 math curriculum, um, I thought that we addressed some of that, so yeah. can you update us? Yep. Yeah. So uh, uh, right now, the committee for the high school is making their recommendation to me. Um, they have one more meeting, and then we will fully um, be completed with that. Um, K-5 has a five-year, remember when, when you took action, it was a five-year. So um, they, they continue to give me feedback and updates on that. They continue to assess. So I would say um, whether you have that as a goal or not, they're going to continue with the K-5 ELA, K-5 math. Um, I would keep new curriculum, including new electives for MHS, because I do want them uh, for example, they don't have physics at the high school. And so I met with the team, I said, you know, we, how do we not have physics? We need that, we need a, a computer teacher, we need some more electives. Right now they have gym and they have art and they have a little bit here and there, but they're not fully competitive. So I would say keep keep that because we really need to grow the electives, not only at the high school level, middle school, uh, at the middle school level. So I would add, I would keep that, but I would add explore new electives at the middle school. The 504, that's already in place. Summer school was a huge hit last year. We're duplicating that. You saw that in my update. That was a huge hit. We already started meeting and developing summer school. We'll be ready to present it at the next, at the May board meeting, but um, June 27th to July 29th will be our, and I'll be prepared to discuss that in my superintendent's report okay. in, in May. So am I hearing you right? We can remove, develop summer school. We feel that's been accomplished. Yeah. Uh, any, any input from anybody? So, uh, the so basically, we can um, either remove one through five, or just um, curriculum committees. Uh, Mr. Gilbert, so they already have those in place. Summer school, he's already worked on that. Uh, special ed for uh, 504. So that's still be on there, or is that a continuous? I mean, it it's done. 504 is a legal document that has to be reviewed every year. Is it done by the superintendent or normally it might be The special done? education um, director. Okay. And then the building principal is oversees the 504. They're the person responsible for that. Who is our special director? Mr. Andre. He does also our uh, cleaners for bank. Trustee Chambliss, go ahead. I think removing the ones that don't necessarily fall um, Mr. Abdullah had would probably make it easier to like fine tune as to what we do need. So he doesn't do the special ed 504, Mr. Andrew does that, so I would remove that one. I recommend moving that one. Um, and then the curriculum committee has already done that, so I would get rid of that. Um, and the summer school. They have a plan last year work they're going to repeat it. I remove that one also. Okay, so remove one, two, and three. Any argument there? Or not argument, discussion? Four and five. I guess that is done as well. Four and five is done as well. Or because they're still in development, do we want to No, they're 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 in implementation. They're right. not. Yeah, so it's continued. Yeah. It's said continued. Oh, so okay. I was asking. Continued development. So do we want to keep four and five or take them out? Well, it says continued development. They've already been developed yeah. and they're making five in the process. All right. So we have um, leaf five and leaf six. Is that fine with everybody? 
Yes. Time is done. Yeah. And that will... That's why she said, take it out. Oh, take it out. Oh, okay. Five, six. Oh. Sorry, sorry. Maybe we counted wrong. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's done? Yeah. Okay. So, for MHS and it was suggested no electives for the middle school. Yeah. To explore um, no electives for the middle school. Is this middle a, school and high school? This says high school. Right. And we're going to add the one that we're going to yeah. say for Wilkins and Middle School. So right now, unless there's an objection, there would not be two. And then anything that we want to talk about from that point on. Uh, any other suggestions? Um, I, I do have a couple of questions, only because I'm trying to stay within the goals. They need to be specific, they need to be measurable, they need to be achievable, and they need to be linked to a time frame. And the one thing about the curriculum that I know all of us have discussed at one time or another, um, what about looking at expanding or becoming a trade center kind of school. We need to have a book that no one else has. Oh, like our, um, like robotics or, or like the machinery and stuff? Trustee Chambers, go ahead. We used to, um, my daughter Ashley, who's a senior now, her freshman, Sophomore and junior year, they had an amazing robotics team. It was ta taught by Mr. Fultz and Mr. Patterson, and they would do competitions, and it was very extensive. And the kids, I mean, the kids were really into it. They even had it at Wilkinson, and then also teachers and parents had started one at the elementary. It was very like beginner, but it kind of phased up as they went. So we used to have a really great robotics team. Um, we don't. Have they didn't have robotics this year, um, and then last year, then it early with COVID and everything, but this year they haven't had it either. Did we lose the robotics teacher? We lost Mr. Folks, we lost Mr. Patterson, and then we lost Ms. Kern. So it would, I think it's the staffing, getting a staff member to do it. So I guess my question today while we're in discussion is, um, is adding new electives to the middle school and the high school, is that specific enough for us or for Mr. Otuahai? I, I, this is input time, so yeah. <laughs> go ahead, Mr. Holcomb. Yeah, once the, the roof gets fixed over there at the high school, I'd like to see all the machines move over there to the shop class. Let's start to get that fired up. That'd be nice. Yeah. We can get a teacher. We could, oh, I'm sorry. Go, no, go ahead. We could potentially just say, like, an amount of one new elective for each building, you know, starting in the fall and another one in January or whatever. Like, we could give, it wants to be measurable, we could say either, like, two or one, whatever, new electives to be started and implemented and running in the fall, just so we do have something new to say for kids coming in September. Mr. Abdullahad, what's your response to I that? think that, that is measurable. Um, I would, you know, um, I mean, I have all these ideas I'm trying to gather because I, I know what we, sh we could be doing is what we could be, what we should be doing. Um, it's hard with teaching staff, but there's always different ways. We're going, we're going to three job fairs uh, in the next two months. Um, statewide job fair that we're going to try to recruit. Um, the superintendent's rights is also in one of them because we're trying to get them. Steal them from other people, and as we try to steal people from other people, uh, other districts, they do likewise. But I think that's measurable. Adding one new elective, if if we add more, great. There's nothing wrong with adding more than than one, but 
One is measurable. You can say, did you do it, did you not do it? I would like to do more, but one is good, and if we have three, then great. Three, three is better than one. Trust 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 Trustee Thompson. How many, do we have languages? Do we teach languages? Spanish only. Okay. Just Spanish? At the high school only. Not, nothing in middle school? Nor elementary. They did, I do know that for the Spanish at the middle school, they did work so hard trying to ensure someone, and they actually had a couple people that were like on, about to get onto the onboarding process, and they dropped out from somewhere else. So I know that Spanish, because that was a huge issue um, that we did lose kids for. Um, I know families got pulled for that reason, because there are limited classes for Spanish at the high school. And so if a child cannot, or a student cannot fit into Spanish in the high school, they might get pushed over to Edmentum, where they're learning languages like German through a computer. No teacher. I mean, they have a computer teacher, but they don't teach the language. So they, they can help them with the program, but they can't help, you know, help them enunciate or anything like that. So um, a lot of students like to get Spanish one out of the way in eighth grade. That way, when they go to ninth grade, they're right to Spanish two, and it kind of lightens up the load a little bit. And well, let's say they did an extensive search and they couldn't, but getting languages would be a huge thing for this district. But I do know that Mr. Gulahad and Mr. Whitman did work really hard on that. So. That's something. Do we still utilize Cousin? Yeah. Because they, you know, my kids took Japanese and Cousin. Okay. And calculus and. So I'll share something. I don't want to let all the all the stuff out of the bag before May second, but uh, in our planning for summer school, we're trying to create some opportunities for incoming ninth graders to get some classes out of the way, some elective classes out of the way during the summer. Spanish being one of them, right? So if an incoming eighth grader that's going into ninth grade could take Spanish in the summer, we already have the teacher, but she worked summer school last year. Then guess what? That's one year out, already out of the way before you even set foot into the high school. So I don't want to let everything out because that, that's what I end up doing. I'd like to have a, a nice package deal for you guys too, but we're, we're trying to find some options. Um, Spanish is, having only one language really is not even the norm, it's less than the norm. Well, and I guess I just want to add um, the, the passion for a trade school kind of thing. We need, we need kids, we need kids that want to be here and not everybody's going to go to college. Um, and I think all of those things that we've been saying for years are still true. And if that needs to be our niche to entice or in, uh, engage people to want to come here, um, I, I think, I don't know how, I don't know, I don't know how to say this. And, and not sound impolite, and so on. I, because I'm not trying to be impolite. I don't know what else or what effort can be made to try to at least make um, part of that work at the high school. I know people have talked about um, trucking school. I have no idea what the trucking school would be. Um, but there has to be something out there that we can have that others can't, and it's going to take work. And, and I'm here to say I feel that we would support you to get the people that you need to do that if that's what it takes for all of us to be successful. California just, it was on the news a few months back, started a truck driving school through their high school. It was a huge success. You know, we always sit and think, why didn't we think of that? Mr. Holcomb. Uh, <clears throat> do we know how many students are going to go to the Operators and Engineers Open for a day? I think less than four. 
question for at middle school. I don't know the numbers at the high school. All right. Well, if we can't get a full bus, is there any way we can reach out to the neighboring schools? Invite them, some of their students? Well, they would sign up on their own. I mean, every district could register and go. They could, but they, I don't know if they all know about it. Just like we didn't know about it. You were advertising, yeah. I, I think. So here's my response to, to your suggestions. We don't have the bare minimum to run a normal high school currently. And although the ideas are wonderful on trays and truck driving, we don't even have enough to meet the graduation requirements. Pete said we don't even offer physics at the high school. Physics. And we're exploring trade. We really need to hone in on building your foundation. Your foundation right now is a sound high school with sound electives, CASA's taking care of the advanced classes, OTEC is taking care of all the other stuff at zero charge. Zero charge, and OTEC is not, they just closed a few programs because they're more successful, and that's OTEC. So our niche can't be something that OTEC itself was not successful at doing. And they were not successful at it. So what makes us think that we could be better and more organized than OTAN? I guess it, this is my thought. We don't have to create a whole school around it, even just a couple of classes, one or two. But the thing is, we need to get our kids back and just having physics I don't know is enough of a draw. We need to get our own kids back, or at least some of them. Um, I'm not here proclaiming to know. I'm just saying um, we need to have something that's a little different than everybody else. Um, Attract uh, uh, your moment. So today, today is our walkthrough. <laughs> Nothing's going to be done. In, in cement today, but I think if there's any suggestions or ways that that we could look at something small, it doesn't. We aren't building a whole school system. We're just trying to attract our kids. Oh, uh, Mr. Urban, go ahead. Oh, Trustee Chandler said something. Oh, okay, you go ahead. It's okay. Oh, it's okay. You know, if enrollment is your your thing, you know, you can leave the details up to the superintendent and say something like undertake measurable efforts to increase enrollment by adding classes, electives, languages, or other innovative programs. That way you leave the details up to the superintendent and your goal is to increase the enrollment. Okay. If that makes Perfect. sense. And then when, with, with, with regard to the superintendent saying, look, we need basic classes, we need physics. If, if having a fulfilled basic bread and butter high school program increases the enrollment and adding that physics class does that, then he's achieved that goal. Um, and the board doesn't have to kind of try to juggle what the curricular nuances are with regards to it. I don't know if that makes sense to the board and to the superintendent, but that's kind of how I view the discussion with this. Yeah. Oh yeah, after. Um, so I was just gonna say that MASB sent out um, during the kind of the like training. They said that the best careers for the twenty first century are healthcare, but not necessarily your doctors. It's, it's the RNs, the administration, the mental health professionals, physical therapy, technology, so robotics, advanced computer classes, things like that, um, business and professional services. We could have teachers, you know, teaching these things, human resources, things, uh, public relations, um, and entrepreneurship. And so we were like, well, what makes those the best careers? They're not the highest paying. They're the ones that are guaranteed to have a job. So, oh, but if you do want a high paying job, the right now the biggest profession that is booming is veterinarian but that specialize in chiropractics. You walk out of school at 150000 a year. So 
we can kind of look at what the big you know draws are going to be and maybe build our school to be more focused on you know helping with all the diversity of classes there would be huge classes and maybe we can find a way to combine a couple classes but if we can add them we can promote that and that might be what people come for because i would have as a parent looking for a new school district i would have gone to a district that said we're focusing on your child as a human being, not as just a, a child in the seat. You know, we're trying to advance them for what comes next. I have to teach my children how to address a letter, to do the things for life skills, the things that they're going to benefit them after high school. That might be what does it. Because you're right, we do need physics. My daughter was just complaining that we didn't have physics. So I do think you're right on that. But I also think if we focus on them as post high school. Not necessarily if it has to be a trade, but just something that you know they can kind of go towards. It'll draw them because they'll be interested and they'll want to be here. So you want that it's undertake measurable efforts to increase enrollment by adding classes, comma electives comma, languages, or, and I think this gets to the last point, increase pro innovative programs. That way, if enrollment is your goal, you're letting them know an increased enrollment. And, and I, you know, I, I suggest the increased enrollment rather than picking a number because Michigan, as we know, across the board is losing kids. So um, then the efforts are what's measurable, not necessarily pulling kids out of your hat, if that makes sense. What does everybody think of that? Yes, yes, yes. Trustee, I wrote what Joe said. Oh, okay. And Mr. Abdullah? Yeah, I'm just jotting down the notes. with board develop administrative guidelines for applicable each section develop process for implementation of policies and guidelines with administrations so we are at the policies part and um, first of all continue review and approval process for policy policy sections with the board we all have been lapsed in doing that and we are hoping that our second board meeting a month is going to address that but it isn't done yet so should we leave it yes. I, I say keep all of it okay um then anybody have a, a disagreement with keeping all three Anybody have anything that they want to talk about in any policy? Hearing none for right now, we will leave it as it stands. Move on to administrative. Um, complete various administrative projects develop and encourage in bargaining process with union groups, sale and charter agreement with keys, develop plan or return to school in fall, hire and retain staff, develop reporting mechanism and rubric for accomplishments. Madam President. Uh, Trustee Akko. We can remove number two. Sale and charge of the keys. Anybody disagree? No? Okay, that one's easy. Um, and I, 
I would just say continue for number one, develop and engage a bargaining process with union groups that's already been done, so I would just change that to continue. And develop plan for return to school in fall. That is that, that was exceptional because of COVID? Because of COVID? Yeah, so we, we so remove number that. three. Hire and retain staff. Will that be your job when we um, get a HR person? Yeah, I'm the final like interviewer and, and make recommendations. Like, so they go through a process. So we interview and then it goes to the second level. And then I would leave this. Yeah, I would, I would say. Again, that's really what I was asking. Yeah. I didn't know. Um, develop reporting mechanism and rubric for accomplishments. And is that for your accomplishments or the, um, I, I really haven't seen here in it, I guess we kind of were remiss in that um, uh, student growth and student knowledge is, is um, measured, unfortunately, by standardized testing. But we somehow or another missed all this. We definitely need to, to look at that. Is that really administrative or something that we need to look at another place? So if you could first um, clarify for me, are you talking about your, your accomplishments, the rubric for your accomplishments, or the district's accomplishments? Well, I mean, I think the two go on hand hand in hand together. I think the, the student growth piece legally is 40%. It has to be. So I am a reflection of the administrative staff. The teachers are a reflection of the administrators are a reflection of the teaching staff. The teaching staff is a reflection of the students. I mean that's that's how that would get the student growth piece. Um, so development reporting mechanisms, to me, when I something is done, I send you an update in, in the week, Sunday weekly update. We're completed this, or we're nearing completion. Um, for example, curriculum after the high school makes that recommendation, that'll be done. That way you're aware of it as, as things come out. That's what I think about, about reporting mechanism um, of accomplishments. I don't, I think, uh, my brain wrote it that yeah, way, but. No, that's fine. I just want everybody to be clear on what the expectation is, what we're talking about. So, what do we have to say? Anybody have input? Just continue with the way we do it. So, instead of saying developing, so continue reporting. Is that with okay with update. everybody? Trustee Chambliss? Trustee Yacht? Yes. Uh, it looks like we might be at the end of this meeting. Do you, I do think you want do you want to talk about in, in here um, any kind of planning for the future? And, and that's what, yes, if you would like to add that, I think that that would be pertinent, especially because we should have a five-year plan. And I knew at some point we're going to work on that, too. Do you like the idea um, of having different companies present you their strategy for strategic planning or do you want to just go with one? My recommendation is let me get you two or three, let them present to you, and you pick the one you guys like. Because um, I know MASB does one, but MLI does one, and um, um, I'm not sure if Clark Hill does strategic planning presentation, but if you present three or four, then you could say, this is the one we like. Everybody on board with that? Yeah. Exactly. So present three or four. Yeah. And can you just tell us, I know um, I meant to ask and forgot, uh, 
uh, back, where are we at with the administrative guidelines? I know we bought them. What's yeah. the update? So, I'm lacking in that whole goal area policy thing. I think having two meetings would really help help me hyper focus on it. We bought them, we have them, um, but I really need to take the time to go over the board policies to see how I would apply each one and then share that out with the admin. Because that's important so many of our policies yeah. are based on that. Yeah. So to not have it. We have yeah. some, but we don't have a, the, all of it. And so administrative guidelines is all of it. Okay. Just wanted to touch base on so with that. Uh, Trustee Chambliss, go ahead. Um, so I know that we bought the NEOLA guidelines, but um, is it possible that we could consider, how often do we renew those? Are you talking about administrative guidelines or policies? I'm talking about NEOLA. Like how often do we policies yeah how so you're talking policies remember um, well you weren't here but in 2019 when I was appointed um, the district had paid for five years and never utilized them so what Neola said is hey we'll give you those hours free because we were never allowed in your district so we're like all right so they've been working with us technically they've not charged us I, I say Let's fully utilize all that money that we pay for. And then if you don't like it, then, or right now it doesn't hurt us to continue utilizing the lot because you've been paying for it. Right. Or they paid for it in the past. When we go to renew them, could, could we possibly get um, presentation or examples or something from Miller Johnson or another company? Neola has some policies that are missing and they're big ones. There's some blatant ones. Um, but so I think that something we might want to consider is other companies because there are ones from the old missing that if we do get in those situations, which I highly 100% don't think will happen, but if we do, we don't have a policy for it. So we're good till 2024 on the I believe so, but I, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, Clark Hill has policies? Yeah, uh, policy like law firm has them. What's that? Um, Miller Johnson does, Clark Hill does, Troon does, Neola does. I think those are probably the four big ones. So if you're saying you want a presentation on all the different policies, that would, you guys would have to tell me, present something, but uh, my recommendation is use the money that you already paid for. And if you don't like it, then change after you get your money's worth. Right, I'm not saying we have to spend any more money if we're getting like free service for nothing, yes. Let's utilize that. But when it comes time to renew, um, just possibly considering some of the other companies, just because there are big policies missing with the OLA. Yeah. That's, this is a decision the board. Yeah. We just apply whatever you guys adopt. You tell me you want a presentation, I will get you three or four present, you know, presentations. I just need to know that when the time's right. I'm asking for that, but whatever the majority says, I just, there are missing things. Trustee Thompson, and I, I think we talked about it in the past, creating committees amongst the board where we sit down and go, there's a lot of policies in that book that are outdated. There's a lot of policies we can't do anything with because they're law. But some of the policies and some of our bylaws are just so outdated. They need to be tweaked, and we just haven't done it. And can now we, that we're doing two of them, I think that would be I helpful. I think we can get that done now. Yeah. Can we tweak the Neola bylaws? I mean, um, the policies? The laws. Policies. Not yeah. laws. It's not a law, we can't. So the our way bylaws are our bylaws. Yes. Right. And so the bylaws are outdated. The policies, the way Neola writes them, they support them legally. Right. Right. So the way it is written, um, I think having the two meetings a month. One, we have to go through them, adopt them, and then if something we don't like, then we could ask legal, can we adjust this one to fit our needs? And then legal will say, yes, you can do this or no in order to be protected. You know, but I would say, I, I like that. Let's start with the policies. 
And if we're very successful in the two meetings, then we can start breaking off into different committees. Um, as we continue to grow, then we can break off. Years, then we need to go through that book. Yeah. You know. So, so as I look at the five of us that are here, knowing two are not here, um, do we concur that we feel comfortable with what we've done today? If the other two had any input or recommended changes, we have a person. Who Oh, go ahead. Oh, I didn't know you were wrapping up, but I was, I was, I was thinking about facilities for a second, and I don't want to, I don't want to reinvent the wheel, but I was thinking about how to consolidate that into something that's achievable by the superintendent, but doesn't bury you guys or the superintendent in detail. Okay. And I just, I had two points I came up with that I, I just want to try on with you guys to think about it. Um, one would be inform the board and the public regarding the status of school facilities monthly. I think that picks up all the stuff you guys were talking about in terms of what's going on with the school and what's going on with the facilities. And then second, communicate major improvements to the public promptly. That gets to your lockers thing um, or the roofing thing or things along those lines. I think those are things that you can measure the superintendent doing, but also you know, it doesn't get you in the weeds over whether this was an asset project or this was a, you know, a, another project or how that works. So just something to think about for either now or for the next time you do it, just making it a little bit more measurable and a little bit more broad. Can you repeat them? Yeah, one, one, just for consideration, number one would be inform the board and the public regarding the status of school facilities monthly. Start to tomorrow. Exactly. We have this, you know. Okay, of the status of what? Uh, status of school facilities monthly. Okay. Yeah. yeah, if you had a flood, you'd tell the board. Yeah, we had a flood. Yeah. Yeah. What was the second one? Communicate the promptly. second one is communicate major improvements to public promptly. That would come your bond project or sinking fund, anything, new lockers, that kind of thing. One thing that uh, one of the two board members that isn't here tonight had wanted to talk about, she was talking partially um, to us and um, to the superintendent about um, she wanted us all to um, go to training, get training. Um, she also wanted to maybe look at the superintendent too. She sent me Michigan Leadership Institute Superintendent Academy or MASA Superintendent Leadership Academy. So maybe we can look at these and see if that would be helpful at all to Mr. Abdullahad. Um, I wrote down the two that was recommended to her and I have some along, so um, maybe we can all do a little bit of investigating and see whether or not that's something we would want to add. So I attended um, the Superintendent's Academy for MASA oh. my first year, and then I did, um, I'm finalizing right now my second year of Horizons Leadership Academy. Okay. So, um, so three years, I've, I've done three trainings. Plus, I go to the, you know, um, when I go to those trainings. So that's what okay. I've done so, so far. So obviously, that was not information that was So there you go. To, to your board. I own it. Trustee Chambliss, go ahead. So just a heads up that the Michigan Department of Education has agreed to reimburse districts for CBA courses for board members. You can get. If all of us take 101 to 109, um, you become a board certified member. If the entire board does that, we become a board certified board. Um, so it would be reimbursed, so normally $90 each, and they'll pay us right back for all of those. There's a whole list of them, but the first um, nine CBAs are covered. Um, and then also, I just wanted to say so they had recommended we possibly consider doing quarterly, like, check-ins with Mr. Abdullahad, whether it be open or closed session, I'm not sure. I think they told us closed session, but Mr. Irvin would know the more like, 
vital of what's actually happening here. So, but a check in every quarter just to see how he's doing up to his goals, so that he doesn't get to the end of the year and you didn't do this or you, know, you did great at that. He didn't hear all year that he was doing good. So it's kind of like we get to re you know praise him, and we also get to like tweak things that we need to to make him more successful and the district more successful. Well, I, I wrote down, I thought, what I heard you say is continue reporting with weekly update on goals in my Sunday. I thought that's what I heard you guys say. Um, and you get that every week instead of every three months. You get that every week from me. I, I think thought. the quarterly is more like, so we get back to you about how we are seeing everything. It's more like a mini eval. It's not really a eval. Like we sit and it can be closed session where we just say, hey, you're doing really great at this. Or it was just a recommendation. They said it's a way to keep um, superintendents in the loop of how the board is seeing their um, work on a more frequent basis versus just waiting to the end of the year and it being all plopped on at once. I have full confidence that the board will communicate if they're not happy with me about something. I don't think the board will uh, wait three months to let me know if they're not happy about something. I am 100% confident they'll let me know. Any, anything else? Mr. Abdullahi, do you have anything else? Um, no, I, I wrote down the notes. What I'd like to do is share them with all of you, and then if that's something that you all like, then I can put it on the agenda. Um, I'll talk to Mr. Urban, I'll, I'll share those, I'll share those with Rod and you guys, uh, but I try to take all the notes of what you discussed and whatever the board. One thing that I do like here that one of the principals of Wilkinson uh, said for almost 50 years ago, if it's good for kids, then it's good. And I was just walking around, I'm like, oh, I never noticed that. Seeing that he said 50 years ago, if it's good for the kids, Decker. then it's who? Was it Decker? Um, his picture's right here at the wall, he's in the middle. But, yeah, yes, from 70, 75. I mean, and he said, so to me, if it's good 50 years ago, it's good now. If it's good for the kids, then it's good. Was Decker the principal or the superintendent? They said Wilkinson here. Oh, okay. Right when you walk in. But um, Mark was a principal and one was a assistant principal. Okay. We always had both. In the 30 years I was in the district for high school and middle school. I don't know why I was that. Well, I mean, you had five, six hundred students at Wilkinson. Both both sides of Nancy and Wilkinson was all full Wilkinson at that time. Our graduating class was over seven. Yeah, and you had fourteen hundred at one time at the high school, right? Yeah, twelve hundred. Um, so can I wrap up now? Then we don't want to be chatting in the next week. We're going to try to make this meeting next. Um, but we're going to get these notes to all of us. If there's any input from the two that aren't here, um, they will let you and I know, and then we can look at a final version of this so that we have a new or current working model. Everybody's in agreement? Sounds good. Sounds good. Thank you for coming tonight. It was important that we get this done. And I appreciate everybody's time. And with that, President Holder. Oh, sorry, I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. Thank you. Go ahead. I got you. We need a second. I'll oh, second it. We're all on a second. <laughs> oh, oh, so. <laughs> you were ready. You were ready. Roll call. Try to get us out. Rebecca Shambliss? Yes. Rebecca Shambliss? Yes. Mark Holcomb? Yes. Cindy Holder? Yes. Mark Deborah Ott? Yes. Gloria Thompson? Yes. Motion passes adjourning meeting at 8.27 p.m. Now the hand comes just because of day you for the All right. Thank you everybody for coming tonight. Way to come together, guys. Great right. job. Great job.
I may make it home. <laughs> And then she puts you in a little board in the pipe. And then she'll be like, you're 